Hello, my midnight Colette's boys and girls. I'm here in the airport in Newark, New Jersey, at guessing somewhere between 2 and 3 a.m. Just waiting for my next flight back to North Carolina. Hopefully. I may be punctuating this video with a few New Jersey jokes. But this uh, video is about conspiracies and people's ability to evaluate what is and isn't or constitutes like deception or conspiracies. People tend to actually think of honest folks as participating in conspiracies while completely neglecting and ignoring the genuine conspiracies they've been misled by themselves for generations and generations. No, there is no genuine conspiracy to convince people the Bible isn't real. Rather the opposite. <laughs> when they began the field of biblical studies, people just took it for granted that the Bible, the Bible, excuse me, the Bible, <laughs> the Bible was representing real history. So they would go to Palestine and Mesopotamia and Egypt, Syria, with a Bible in their hand, and they start digging up, you know, different sites in the clumsy ways that people would do in like the 19th and early 20th century and still kind of do now sometimes with the ultimate intention of proving the Bible real against the forces of textual analysis that did devious conspiratorial things like point out all the times that the Bible contradicted itself or you know how Moses probably couldn't have written the first five books because it mentions that he dies in it you know usually when you write a book about yourself like an autobiography usually you don't mention your own death and then that first and second Genesis are completely contradictory accounts of the creation, etc., etc., etc. Well, people were upset by this, as many people still are today, and went, you know, put their money on the line, you know, their lives on the line, went on amazing adventures to prove their, I wouldn't go like fairy tale books. There's a basis in, you know, history for a lot of what's in the Bible. I'm not going to deny a lot of that, but see what they could find out and that's very admirable I think that the bigger issue was when it became a self uh, fulfilling confidence machine you know New Jersey pop quiz what's New Jersey's most common nickname New York's anus how's the weather like in Detroit Top 10 locations of getting stabbed. I can't believe it's not Delaware. And some potential New Jersey nicknames. What popular household machine was manufactured in Elizabeth, New Jersey for more than 100 years? Um, Jumper cables designed specifically for testicles. Get back on topic. I don't know. I, I'm in New Jersey. It's not your fault. You don't have to say you're sorry. But I'm in New Jersey now. Uh, we're talking about conspiracies about the Bible very boring topic right well 
there actually has been quite a contrary conspiracy to overemphasize the Bible in archaeology. If you are an archaeologist, a historian of any sort working within academia, you're going to require resources to do your research. You're going to have to get secure finance for digs and for publishing and you have to publish, you know, in order to secure a tenured position at a university. I talked about that a little bit in a video that I ultimately removed because it was lame and boring and it was about Indiana. That should be New Jersey's nickname. We're still better than Indiana. This <laughs> security guard laughed at my joke, I think. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of the people who are really into funding biblical archeological research are people who are really into the idea of proving the biblical account historically. And archeologists are kind of held in hock to that because they have to give something titillating, right? The media can seize upon that these Christian philanthropists feel like they, they made something valuable out of their investment, you know, in reinforcing people's faith. Where can you find New Jersey's tallest building? Well, wherever you find, you know, the remains of, well, I was gonna make like a mafia joke. I'm too tired to be witty right now. So they're, they're really obsessed with proving the Bible historically. And the problem is that's not really how history works, how archeology span works. You pretty much only discover things you know, that are real. And there's a fair degree of scrutiny usually about fakes. If a fake is too convenient, there are, you know, historians who analyze these things and they point it out and they figure it out. Kind of like what that passage in Josephus that mentioned Jesus that was for a very, very long time that they, fig they had figured it out that the church had added that into Josephus just based on textual analysis, linguistic analysis, you know, voice, literary analysis in general. They realized that Josephus wouldn't write something like that. It's funny because it's probably the only reason why Josephus was preserved to the present day is because of that shoehorned in part that the, the, the church added about Jesus, one of the very, very few sources outside of the Gospels that mention Jesus as a historical figure, and it's marred by this, you know, significant addition, kind of breeds a lot of skepticism, let's say. But yeah, with, when it comes to biblical archaeology, well, it's the fact that they even called the large archaeology kind of like plays their hands is a quiet part out loud. They're not looking really to find out what the truth is. They're looking to reinforce a truth that they already believe in. That's kind of how I justify my work. Now, I'm, I'm not like the stereotypical archaeologist, you know, doing digs. I'm never going to get funding for that because the people who have money and power are not really interested in honesty. And obviously Christians are a very wealthy and powerful group. People, all the things that people complain about Jews for, the Christians are a million times worse in terms of manipulating the media and misrepresenting historical facts, etc., etc. Being offended for the least critique is a very Christian thing. Taking ideology way too personally. That's more of like a Christian thing than a Jewish thing. Jewish people can debate very heatedly and then they'll be best friends the next day. 
you disagree with a Christian over how many natures Christ has, and it starts a war that lasts 200 years. So that's kind of like the difference between Christians and Jews. Well, like I said, there's also the political influence right now in biblical archaeology from Zionism. There's a whole historiography of Zionism. Part of it is biblical. A lot of the Zionist narrative is a religious narrative. They kind of use the, the fact that a lot of people still believe in the biblical narrative literally as a tool, and that's, that informs a lot of their archaeological research, but a larger part of Zionist archaeology is actually relating to more recent history than the Iron Age and the Bronze Age. I'm talking about like the classical period, the Hasmoneans, you know, the Herodians, the Bar Kokhbar vaults, these sort of like history that mainstream Judaism kind of disavowed for many years, the idea of like a Jewish nation state, a Jewish ethnicity was disavowed by Jewish culture for millennia on account of its, you know, massive failure. These, these revolts, you know, against the Romans did so much long-term damage to Jewish people not just in the short term, but in the long term too. A lot of the prejudices that became prevalent in Christian society were only able to catch on so much because of the interactions between the Jews and the Hellenistic and Roman world. And the rabbis, very well known for self-criticism and, you know, debate and thought very quickly figured that out and kind of repudiated these nationalist figures like the Maccabees and especially Bar Kokhba. They called him, instead of Bar Kokhba, the son of a star, they called him Bar Kozeba, the son of disappointment, which is a sick burn, sick rabbinical burn in Aramaic. But it also has a more nefarious purpose. When you go to archaeological digs in the land of Palestine that are conducted by the Israeli government with Israeli funding, or in many cases by Western institutions that are church funded, they'll essentially just discard any sort of uh, archaeological remains after you know, the Roman period, especially the Christian period. Once it gets into Islamic history, a, an antiquity goes from being an antiquity to being garbage, essentially. They've destroyed so much important archeological heritage in Palestine by digging straight for the oldest, older layers first without fully taking the care to catalog and and study these Ottoman Mamluk caliphate sort of periods in Palestinian history. And this is done partially because there are limited resources in archaeology, but partially also because they want to erase Palestinian history, the history of Palestine as a part of the Islamic world, which is about just under 1,500 years of history of Islamic dominated Palestine. And regardless of one's personal opinions on the Islamic religion, I actually tend to hold a fairly favorable view now based on my experience of living in Muslim countries and visiting them with some exceptions. Uh, I, I, I I think it's extremely important to take antiquity seriously, irrespective of their age, whether they're 200 years old or 2000. It's our human history, our human story, 
and the neglect for more modern history in Palestine is, is and the destruction of it is one of the greatest losses to humanity past just the human abuses of the genocide against the Palestinian people the Zionists try to erase the Palestinians from their place in their own history through the destruction of their villages through the destructions of you know a whole vast layers material culture in all the tells in Palestine and you go to Jaffa you easily just find like 500 year old pottery just lying around like refuse and someone who knows it can say oh they can point it out and they can say oh this is from you know the 1500s oh this is from the 1700s the Ottoman Empire but this is just treated like garbage and refuse because it's the material culture of Palestinians not of ancient Israelites and it doesn't serve their ideology and I'm not thinking this is something always a direct conspiracy it's more just the actions of institutions in you know any sort of academic field are tending to promote the interests of themselves it's just bog standard historiographical stuff but you know I promised this video a long time and I happened to film it in New Jersey you don't have to say you're sorry it's not your fault gabagool